It's definitely here to stay. Uh, can wine is uh, the fastest growing form of alternative wine packaging on the market right now. And that's the category that includes box wines and Tetra Packs, those little containers you might see juice or uh, coconut water in at the, uh, the supermarket. Augustus Weed knows a thing or two about wine. He's the tasting coordinator for Wine Spectator and says canned wine is a tasty, booming trend. According to Nielsen, uh, retail sales of canned wines have gone from 2 million in uh, 2012 to 129 million in uh, by April of this year. So it's, it's so definitely crazy. Here to stay. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely here to stay. And why do you think that this has caught on? I think there's a lot of factors uh, that have contributed to its growth. Um, certainly, the portability and the portion size of canned wines, um, I think, really appeals to wine drinkers uh, on the go, especially. Um, you know, they're light, they're durable, you can throw them into a bag, you can throw them into a cooler and take them to the beach, to the park, you can take them on a boat. Uh, in fact, I've taken them on camping trips and it's it's kind of an ideal format for, uh, for that outdoor experience where you want a little bit of wine. I have found some really good canned wine. Like, I have been surprised at what I'm tasting. And that's certainly true in, in our uh, blind tastings at Wine Spectator. You know, when I started reporting on canned wine in 2016, uh, canned wine quality could be kind of hit or miss, but that's really all changed. In recent blind tastings, uh, editors of Wine Spectator have, find, have found some really good high quality wines coming in cans. Uh, in fact, we've tasted more than a dozen canned wines that have scored 85 to 89 points. Uh, which is very good on Wine Spectator's 100-point scale. I think a lot of producers are kind of learning about the best styles and best uh, varieties that can go into a can, and so you've certainly seen an increase in the quality uh, overall. Larkin Wines was one of the uh, one of the producers that we've seen really producing high-quality wines in a can. Um, Sean Larkin, the winemaker, uses grapes from the Napa Valley. Um, another producer uh, we've been seeing is uh, Sans Wine Company, and that's uh, Jake Stover and and Gina Schober, uh, who launched that brand in 2015, and they're making a, a wide variety of single vintage, uh, or single vineyard, excuse me, and um, vintage specific wines. We reached out to HEB to see how canned wines stack up in their stores. Canned wine annual sales at HEB grew over 300% from 2017 to today. Last year, they doubled shelf space for its canned wine category to carry more inventory. Sparkling is the most popular, making up 60% of sales in 2019 for HEB. And the Sophia Blanc de Blanc sparkling is the most popular for the grocery store. Do you find that maybe the rosés or the whites in a can is better than a red or even a bubbles, or are they all kind of, are they all kind of good? That's a great question. In our earlier tastings, we were finding really white wines and rosé uh, quality that, you know, those wines typically perform the best. Uh, but we've really seen an increase in, in red wine quality recently. You can now find uh, Pinot Noir from the Russian River, from Anderson Valley, um, uh, also other uh, grapes like Carignan, which are doing really well in, in cans. Um, but you know, on a, a warm day, uh, when I really want something nice and refreshing, I typically go for the, for the white wines or the rosés. Uh, that's kind of my warm weather sipper. Super interesting, right? I mean, the, the huh. sales are booming. By the way, what? There's an Ava Grace on the screen, yeah. which is one of my favorite inexpensive rosés I get at Costco. It's like oh. six bucks. Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah. yeah, and it's in the can. So these that you're seeing here on our set are some of HEB's most popular uh, when it comes to wine in a can. This Porch Pounder, which they have everything from Chardonnay, a red wine, which you had at the top of the show, yeah. a rosé, and then also a Brute rosé, so a sparkling. What do you think? They're all fantastic. I mean, sparkling is what I sort of gravitate Me too. toward. And also, it's just kind of nice and festive to, like, pop a can of bubbles. Yeah. It's and fun. It is super fun. And then um, this Weston Wilder um, rosé, which is actually uh, Pinot Noir, Carignan, which you heard Augustus talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, Zinfandel, it's dry, it's refreshing, it's bright. I mean, it's such, there's so many great varieties now. And you think about the cost comparison, um, you know, if you're camping or you're going somewhere down 
down to the beach or your beach house or something, this is so easy. You know, you can Throw stick it in, in the cooler. cooler. Exactly. Well, also, it's interesting that as the popularity has been increasing, it used to be you'd go to the grocery store and you would see the little boxes of Sofia Coppola. Yeah. And now there's an entire section for it. I know. Keep, that continues growing. And you heard the stats from HEB. I mean, they know that this is a booming trend, not going anywhere. They've actually increased their inventory and their space in their stores um, be to have this wide variety and by the way we do want to mention because Augustus thank you so much for um, joining us today yeah, from uh, Wine Spectator his latest article is online we've linked it for you and this is talking about um, you know where sales are today and what also they've seen during COVID-19 with sales oh, so it's interesting. very interesting and then he has his top picks in there as well let me guess during COVID it's exploded even more I don't know you have to read it and see <laughs>